I talk about gin on my YouTube channel. Ah, I talk a load of old flannel. Ah, that's a British phrase. Ooh, I built this place all by myself. You can tell by the crooked shelf. I drink all the gin so you don't have to waste your hard-earned cash. No nonsense gin drinking. All gin, no nonsense. Hello gin lovers, welcome back. I'm Bobby Freeman and today my friends, we're going to be running through 10 gins from 10 countries. And you might be wondering to yourself, well, what's the point in doing that, Bobby? Well, I shall tell you. There's two reasons, in fact. Number one is because I have viewers and subscribers from around the world. I'm very, very lucky to have people watching this channel from many, many different countries. So I thought it'd be nice uh, to sort of run through a few of them for you today. I actually have more than uh, viewers from more than 10 countries, but to be honest, that's going to be a hell of a long video. So I think we'll just do it in sort of 10 sort of country installments and we'll see how we go from there. Secondly, of course, I have a lot of gin here and sometimes it's easy to forget some of the ones that I've reviewed sort of long way time back. So it's nice to kind of revisit them sometimes and sort of sort of relive that experience again. So we're going to be doing it for you today with 10 gins from quite literally 10 countries. But before we get stuck in, I have to thank two more of my wonderful subscribers who have joined my Patreon. So Mr. Jan Skarupa, thank you very much, and Mr. Alexander Lodin. You two are now officially supporters of the show. You have my respect respect, my admiration and my eternal gratitude. You are gentlemen and I salute you. And if you'd like a salute on the channel then head over to my Patreon page and you too could find yourself being quite literally saluted. And another bit of housekeeping before we start, I have developed a leak in the roof of my studio which sort of drips down periodically onto sort of this area here as it's been raining last night. So occasionally you may notice me sort of subtly wipe it away like that and then just sort of uh, wipe it on my trousers. But we will, I, I, I shall do it in such a subtle way that you will barely even notice. You don't get that on other YouTube channels, do you? But here, my friends, I bring you in on every tiny detail of the channel. So um, if there are, perchance, any roofers watching the show who are uh, willing to give me a good discount, then please leave a comment in the section below. <laughs> right then, my friends, that's quite enough messing around for one episode. Someone actually pointed out in a, in a comment on a video a few weeks ago that uh, for a channel called No Nonsense Gin, there is, in fact, an awful lot of nonsense. So I will crack on and concentrate on delivering the awesome content that you all tuned in for. Country number one. England. That's right, my friends, my good old home country of old blighty. Tally ho! Doodle pip! Mum's the word! Last one home's a rotten egg! So this was quite a tricky one to start off with because obviously we have a lot of gin in England. And I, I could have gone for the beef eater over there. It seems like this sort of obvious choice, but I thought I'd go for one that has become my sort of recent favourite. I'm really, really enjoying it. I was quite a latecomer to it as well, to be honest. And it is this little fellow here. My friends, I give you very expensive sound effects they're used as well. It is the number three gin. And this, as I say, this chap I discovered a few, uh, a couple of months ago, I reckon, after loads and loads of recommendations from my subscribers. And um, they were right, because this absolutely knocked my socks off. They were, my socks were instantly removed and transferred to the other side of the room in a flash. Because not only does it have one of the most delectable bottles on the market with a beautiful little key there, which apparently is a replica of the key to the parlour, which is the oldest room in the distillery where they make this gin, but also it is probably one of the best gins I've ever tasted. It's very, very simple. If you look at the botanicals, very, very simple. Nothing weird and wonderful going on in there, but it is just, it's, it's a little bit stronger than usual as well. It is 46% and I don't know what they've done in there, but it just works magically. It's got that little bit of an extra kick from that sort of higher ABV than what you caught what from, well, from most gins, but it just uses all those sort of classic gin flavors and sort of coriander and the juniper and the citrus in there just harmoniously. And the kind of the citrus kind of sticks up a little bit higher than anything else, but I, it's kind of difficult to sort of convey it in words, to be honest, you know, and that's obviously my job doing this. But honestly, if you ever see, if you like gin and you appreciate gin for what it is, you need to get a bottle of this, my friends, because it is quite simply wonderful and one of the best products that my country has ever produced. Country number two, Australia. 
Right, mates, number two, we're going all the way down under to Australia, and this little fella, which is three-fold gin, from the old mate Steve the Bartender, who is another YouTuber, but he does like cocktails and mixology, and he's a bloody good all-round nice bloke as well. Now, I reviewed this one a few weeks ago, and I, I'm actually very lucky, because I don't think there's many bottles of this in the country, but it just blew my mind. In fact, well, I, I, my regular viewers and subscribers will know that I, here on No Not Such Gin Drinking, I love, I love the Australian gins. They are almost consistently 100% brilliant. And it was actually a very difficult decision to choose this one to represent Australia because where's the, ah, here we go, it's down here. There's also another really good one called the Melbourne Gin Company here. And I was in two minds about which one to choose, but for me, Threefold just pips it. It's just got that little bit more of a personality. And it uses a brilliant blend of citrus fruits with oranges and lemons and a tiny sort of scattering of grapefruit in there as well as all your classic gin sort of botanicals. And this, you, I always say you can tell when a gin has had its, uh, you know, that when, uh, had someone's heart and soul poured into it. And this, it's almost throbbing with heart and soul and passion. And I really, really enjoy it. I'm rationing it because, um, I, as I say, there's not many in the country. I'll have to get on to Steve to send me another one. But that, my friends, if you're ever in Australia, or indeed if you live in Australia, you need to get a load of that because that is an excellent ambassador for my Aussie friends down under. Country number three, the USA. Next on the list is the good old US of A, and I like to do my Southern cowboy accent when I do this. Not People have been pointing out to me not everyone in America talks like this, but here in England, that's what we goddamn think. Now, we got a few choices here, okay? We could have picked Aviation American Gin up there, which is owned by Ryan Reynolds, who just sold his share in the gin company for $650 million. Now, I've featured this gin on the show quite a lot and given him a good bit of publicity. Did he give you even one dollar to old Freeman over here did he hell so I'm not gonna go with the aviation we could have gone with the blue coat over there from Philadelphia which was very nice but I'm gonna go with my absolute favorite and I'm gonna have to change the accent a little bit here because this gin's from Brooklyn I don't know what that accent was oh no I've gone back into English hang on a second let me get the gin down for you there we go this my friends is Brooklyn gin now I'm not very good at my New York accent it's kind of like that a little bit hey buddy what are you doing get out of my office I shoot you in your ass or something like that anyway but this my friends first of all take a look at that bottle that my friends is a work of art and it's even got if you can see on the top there apparently this bit here is an ice stamp so you can kind of just stamp that sort of logo into a block of ice should should you wish to do so. Now I'd seen this on the shelf quite a few times in the supermarket and I was like wow that looks pretty impressive but I don't know why I sort of put off buying it for a while but oh my god goodness. Once I tried it, I was in love. And I would say it is my favourite American gin. The flavours in this. Oh man, it's also one of those gins that's really good to sniff. It's massively, massively juniper forward. It's laden down with it. You're almost sort of wallowing along. And the flavours are big, thick, and heavy and sort of almost sort of intoxicating and it's just a beautiful gin if you don't like juniper probably not the one for you but if you do you couldn't get more gin than this because the flavors are so heavy and so juniper in there and it's just a wonderful one and i recommend it's available most places not just in america i got it very easily over here if you if you're a big gin lover and you're serious about gin this one my friends has got to be on the shelf if not only just for the pure oh my god i don't believe Leave it! <laughs> I'm just picking up the bottle, it's actually fallen apart. Okay, fine. Put that aside, but the bottle falls apart. Um, it, it, it's a, I was trying to bring it to a crescendo there, but that's kind of scuffed me a little bit. But anyway, it's an excellent gin, and uh, even if the bottle does fall apart. <laughs> Country number four, Scotland. That's right, my friends, for the next gin, we're going up to the Highlands. And we've got, we've got a couple of choices for this one as well. I could have had the wee botanist. Where's the wee botanist? Aye, there he is up there, a wee little bottle on the top shelf. But I thought I'd, I'd sort of go back to this wee fellow over here, because this, my friends, is Hendrix gin. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, why the bloody hell does it say Nerissa's gin on there? That's because my girlfriend's name is Nerissa, and Hendrix do a lovely wee product where you can personalise the label. And I got her this for her birthday, because I'm a bloody nice chap. 
Now, this gin does divide the opinion. I don't know why I went so high in that there, but I think I'll drop the accent for a second to make this point. Yes, it does divide opinion because I reviewed this one way back when, right at the beginning of my show when I was in my old studio. And it's, I have to say, it's not my favorite gin. However, a lot of people absolutely love it and it is extremely popular and available everywhere worldwide. Well, most places anyway. And the reason I don't like it is because I am not a cucumber lover. And in Hendrix, in the distillery, they whack a good old load of cucumber into the still when they're making it. So it gives it this sort of, obviously it gives it a cucumbery essence. And for a man that does not like cucumber, that is not a good thing. So basically, I would say to you, this is a great product of Scotland. It's been very, very successful, but if you like cucumber, fine. Go for your life. You will love this. I know some people like putting cucumber in the gin as well and then nibbling away a bit afterwards. To me, I, I, I cannot think of anything worse. So if you don't like cucumber, stick with old Freeman over here. We'll drink, we'll, we'll just go and drink something else. But for the, so, uh, but the, oh God. So yeah, it's a very popular product, but just be wary of the old cucumber in there if you doth not like it. Country number five, Africa. Now then, my friends, we come to possibly one of the most exciting gins that we've ever, or certainly the most unusual gin that we've ever featured on the show. And it is this little chap here, which is In Love You Gin. Now, I reviewed this a few weeks ago, and my, my regular viewers and subscribers and know exactly what I'm going to say, and they know exactly why this is so weird. If you're not a regular viewer and subscriber, perhaps this is the first time you've tuned in, this, my friends, strap yourselves in, Sit, are you sitting comfortably right? Are you sitting down? Because there's going to be a bit of a shock here. This, my friends, is made from <clears throat> elephant poo. <coughs> Did you just say elephant poo? I most certainly did, my friends. They go around and they forage, I believe will be the correct word. They get a load of elephant poo. They put it in the distillery. I'm not sure if this is exactly how it happens. But anyway, they use elephant poo to make it. And apparently, elephant poo has been used for years, uh, traditionally, uh, to make uh, different types of tea. And apparently, it contains all sorts of nutrients and antioxidants. And I tell you what, I was really kind of apprehensive when I first tried it. But it actually tastes really nice. As you can see, I'm, I, again, this is one of the ones that's only a few in the country I'm very lucky to have. So we are rationing this one. But my girlfriend and I absolutely loved it when we tried it. It's got kind of a sort of a, I'd say a grassy sort of earthiness to it, but no way in the world does it taste in any way unpleasant. In fact, as I say, it tastes absolutely amazing. So if you're ever in a country where this is available, have a look on their website. It's not massively sort of uh, distributed, but it is certainly one to try. And I don't think you will find any more interesting gin anywhere in the world, my friends. Country number six, Italy. That's all right, my friends. Next on the list, we go over to Italy, which means I get to do my wonderful and very pleasing and highly accurate Italian accent. Now, this was an easy choice for me. I sound a little bit like that Bruno Tavioli, the guy from Dancing with the Stars. Oh, God, I need to knock over the gin. Go like this, and I like that, and he wiggles his hips like this. Come on, move your body. I want to feel the passion in the dancing. Whew, it's quite exhausting doing the Italian accent, so I'll drop back into my own native accent just to explain these gins to you. Now, anyone who knows anything about gin, will know about Malfi because they just project, they kind of sit quietly in the background, don't make a song and dance, don't any have any big advertising campaigns or anything, but they just sit in the background quietly producing just exceptional gins. These are three of their ones here. There's also a sort of a classic Malfi as well, which is what I'd call their kind of, uh, I say standard gin, that sounds a bit disparaging, but what you'd call their sort of normalish sort of uh, gin, like your beef eaters and your sip smiths and your brokers. However, these ones here are the sort of flamboyant brothers and sisters. So this one is the Malfi Con Limon, which is a lemon flavoured gin. This one here is the uh, Malfi Gin Rosa, which is a pink gin. And this fella on the end is Con Aranancia. Aranancia. I always get that word wrong, but basically it's a blood orange gin. And they are 
um, incredible in their own ways. The lemon one's just the perfect sort of sort of injection of zesty lemoniness into a gin without going to the stupid extremes, which I think the ridiculous sort of farcical extremes of, of the Gordons over here with their lemon gin. As you can see, they've just obviously clearly put um, some sort of artificial colouring in there to make it look like yellow because they think that they basically think their customers are idiots and they need something to be yellow if it's going to taste of lemon which is complete rubbish, as you can see, because that one is clear. The Sipsmith's up there as well. That's a lemon gin. That one is clear as well. You don't need to be putting those stupid colorings in. So don't let the buggers fool you, my friends. And the pink gin here, which is just kind of, well, as you'd expect a sort of a pink gin to be, really. It's got sort of Sicilian grapefruit in there. It has a beautiful sort of sweetness as well as a sort of zest in there for the citrus as well. But the blood orange one, my friends, that one is my favorite. I mean, just look at the color of that. It's, it's almost kind of pink. It's but it's basically um there are a lot of orange gins on the market but this one for me is my absolute sort of top notch one because it does it in sort of a, a different way it's not orange as you expect it it's almost sort of a, a bitter quality but with a sort of a delicate sort of drizzle of sweetness as well and honestly i cannot recommend these gins highly enough and very very worthy ambassadors for italy Mopping, mopping, mopping my studio. It's got a leak in the roof, don't you know? Country number seven, Spain. That's right, my friends, all the way from España. Now, unfortunately, I can't do the Spanish accent. Some would argue I can't do any accent at all, but I give it a bloody good go. But unfortunately, I won't be able to do it for this one. But let me introduce you to it all the same. This is Nordez gin. Now, this little fellow is quite a unique one. I'm so, again, apologies for the tiny sample bottle. This was actually sent to me by one of my uh, patrons, Mr. Nicholas Sergi. So thanks very much for sending it in, Nicholas. Now, it was quite a unique gin, and I can see why he really wanted me to, uh, to try it. So as well as the usual sort of gin botanicals, this one has eucalyptus, lemon bavenna, and samphire, which are fairly unusual sort of botanicals to use in gin. It gives it kind of a sort of a kind of an oceanic sort of uh, sort of a theme to it. But most interestingly, it has kind of a sort of a minty sort of essence to it, which gives it a sort of a, a freshness, which I wasn't 100% sure to start with, but it's one of those gins that once you kind of, you take the first sip and you're a bit like, oh, wow, especially the sort of the freshness and the little bit of sort of burning sensation of, the, of that sort of minty quality. But after a few sips, you kind of settle into it and you're like, you know what? This is kind of quite nice. It's kind of sort of a, a new way of enjoying gin. So this, as I say, if you want something a little bit different, perhaps you sort of tried, you know, sort of many of the sort of the mainstream gins, give this one a little go because it's kind of gin as we kind of know, but just with a beautiful couple, of, I was going to say with a twist, but I'd say with two or three different twists sort of working all in conjunction with each other, if that, if you can imagine such a thing. So uh, yes, my friends, if you fancy something different, give the old Nordes a go from España. Country number eight, France. That's right, my friends. The next one on the list is all the way from France, or en français, as we say in France. And it goes by the name of Givine Gin. I don't, know if it's, I don't know if they say gin or gin, but I like to say, ah, gin. No, gin, gin. I like to drink gin. I don't know, I did not do my research, but this one is very, once again, a very unique gin because this one, instead of the usual uh, sort of botanicals you would expect to find in gin, this one is based on grapes or grapes, as we say in England. Now that is a very, very unusual thing for gin because it's usually based with grain. So this I thought, so I, I assumed when I heard about that, I thought it was going to be a kind of a sort of a whiny sort of taste to it because that obviously makes sense. They make grapes with wine. This is a spirit, it's alcohol. That sort of seems like a sort of a natural sort of progression to me. However, my friends, however, I was quite surprised because rather than sort of the wine taste, it's actually a grapey taste, which gives it a sort of a sweetness to it and a real sort of luscious fruitiness. And I was quite surprised by that because I'll be honest with you, I'm not a big wine drinker. I can drink it. I can pretty much drink anything, to be honest, but I would very rarely go for wine. I don't really enjoy it. So I was so pleasantly surprised when I tried this. Instead of that sort of, uh, sort of what would you call it, sort of a sharp sort of essence that a wine gives you, it got this lovely sort of fruity sweetness to it, as if someone had just squeezed some actual grapes in there, not put it through the whole process and got to the wine point yet. It's basically grape 
gin and again that is something very very rare and if like i say if you've tried loads of gins and you're looking for something a little bit different that my friends is something really special and you could do a lot lot worse than having that little fellow on your shelf country number nine canada that's right, my friends. Next up is Canada. Now, here in the UK, we can't tell the difference between Canadian and American accents. To me, this is my Canadian accent. Someone told me you have to say the word A quite a lot. But I'm, I, to be honest, I've known a few Canadian, Canadians, Canadians? I've known a few Canadians, and I've never heard anyone say A, but I'll take your word for it. And the gin we're going to be featuring today is this little beauty over here. It is Empress 1908. Eight. And this, my friends, is quite special because as you can tell, I mean, look at the colour of that. It's just quite extraordinary. But not only is it the colour quite extraordinary because it, uh, it, the colour will not be that way for very long because if you pour it out, it actually changes colour. And when I first saw this gin, I thought maybe that would be, oh, cork test, I thought that would be a bit of a gimmick. And I suppose it is in a way. But not only is a gimmick, is it a gimmick, it also tastes unbelievably brilliant as well but let's just show you how this works when it changes color so i'll sort of zoom in and do a close-up on that hang on a second let me just uh, pour that into the older i'll put that behind there so you can see it so here we go and it's pink as you can see that has gone completely pink purpley pink let's whack a bit more in just to make it go properly pink here we go and it is a pink gin, my friends. And that has got to be a crowd freezer. Well, pink is sort of pinkish purple, isn't it, I think? But it will go pink. That didn't go quite to plan. But yeah, well, sod it. I'll put some more in. Hang on. Put the whole lot in. There we go. God damn it, it's pink. And to me, as a sort of a gin collector, I love the idea of when friends come around, they say, show us something a bit, you know, you've got a lot of gin. Show us something that's really out there, really wonderful. I'll put that over there so you can actually see it. Something that's a bit weird. And it's, to me, that is kind of a party trick to bring out in front of your friends. I'll try a little bit as well. It's quite watered down, but it's still very nice. And I love the fact that I could do that for people. And it's almost sort of a crowd please, isn't it? Everyone's just sort of, you're expecting everyone to sort of stand up and give you a bit of a round of applause, a standing ovation, if you will. But as I say, the flavours back up that party trick. And I was sure that wasn't going to be the case, but it really is. It's a genuinely beautiful drink, uh, uh, gin to drink. The if you go on their website, it's absolutely, it's an amazing looking website. They have a sort of a graphic of the bottle and all the sort of botanicals are sort of floating around it and they kind of move a little, a little bit. And you can see there's grapefruit in there, there's spices, there's cinnamon, there's cardamom, there's butterfly pea flower, which gives it that blue flavour. And to me, it's a beautiful sort of sweetness about it mixed with a fantastic floral quality and it's just seductive. So to me, that gin has got everything it's got the party trick it's got the look and um, but it has got the taste to back up as well so to my canadian friends i say to you my friends keep up the good work country number 10 india that's right my friends last but by no means possible least is my lovely new friend which is greater than gin from India. Now I featured this in one of my in my videos a few weeks ago. Uh, five unexpectedly brilliant gins and. Goodness me, is it unexpectedly brilliant? Because for whatever reason, I never sort of thought of uh, gin as coming from India. By the way, I can't obviously do the accent for this one because I would get taken down from YouTube. But when I reviewed it, uh, my girlfriend, uh, Narissa, is actually from India. So I brought her in and she sort of did a bit of sort of Indian stuff and, and, and we sort of uh, had a bit of a very good laugh. But after the video, we sat down and drank some of it. And honestly, well, as, as you can see, by there's hardly anything left in there. We only bought it a few weeks ago. It's just brilliant it's what i would call there's nothing sort of fancy and sort of weird and sort of wonderful about it it's not doing anything sort of out there and crazy it just is a great gin you got all those cardamoms and the coriander and the licorice root and the sort of beautiful level of juniper but with the, what i really like is it the orange kind of peaks just a little bit more than anything else and for me that's what the perfect i love a bit of orange and gin that's what the perfect sort of um sort of core gin should do. All that good stuff with a tiny bit more of orange in there. And in fact, I even went so far as to predict that, and you know, because they say that India is a sort of a, a sort of a, a rising superpower. I think that in a few years time, this little chap could even, if it sort of expands throughout the world, 
I think it could even replace, because it's really reasonably priced, it's about 20 pounds here in the UK. I think it's cheaper than that in India. But um, that is beef eater territory, because beef eater obviously is about sort of, it's usually around a little bit under 20 pounds. But if this gets to the main market, it goes mainstream, I think we could be seeing a new kind of uh, central core go-to gins for world wide and be sort of knocking beef eater off its top spot so watch out beef eater because india is coming for you so my friends thank you very much for watching the video today i hope you found it useful it's been kind of sort of cathartic and sort of nostalgic to sort of go through some of the old ones again i've certainly enjoyed it and so if you have enjoyed watching it and you found it useful in any way shape or form don't forget to if you haven't already subscribe to my channel press the little like button and of course the bell icon so you get notified when all my new videos come out and of course like my good friends jan skarupa and alexander lodin if you want to support the channel head over to my patreon page as well or if you don't want to do that just press the little join button below this here video. But until next time, guys, I don't want to knock over these gins. Take care, stay safe. Thank you to all my patrons and keep drinking the gin.